Me and Nathan, you'll remake it. <laughs> when it's actually good. That's gay. <laughs> I entered the house at the same time as the bell went off, so I lost time to lag. What? What? Hmm. What? <laughs> so during this all dead speed run of Animal Crossing, Bosby accidentally discovered a wrong warp. In Animal Crossing, there are special events that happen based on the internal clock of the device you're playing on and are usually triggered after a bell that sounds in the game every hour. When Bosby entered the post office to pay his first debt, the bell went off and it tried to play a cutscene, but it couldn't while he was entering. You can hear Bosby say this as he enters the post office because originally he thought it was going to waste some time because the bell made the loading time a little longer on entering the post office. However, when he left the post office, the game attempted to play a special event cutscene at the same time as the cutscene you get after paying your first debt, and a glitch occurred sending him two acres back to Nook's shop. This is what is assumed that happened, but nobody is completely sure, but it definitely does seem to make sense. There are no sources that the glitch has ever been repeated for how specific the circumstances are and the rarity of the glitch. However, if it were to be used in a speedrun, it would save roughly 15 to 20 seconds. Grab the coupon. I didn't even move my arm, but okay. <laughs> no, I did. I, I had control of the other arm. Here you go, sir. <laughs> Thank you, you for like visiting the Curry Aquatic Funds. Have a whale of a time. <laughs> What the? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Where are we? Where should we go? What even just happened? Are we on the ceiling? Oh, carefully. I want to stay up here. During Polydian's co-op playthrough of Octodad, Dadliest Catch, he was playing with his wife in which they both controlled different limbs of Octodad. During the aquatic fun center level, after getting into the ticket booth, a ticket spawned. While they were standing in front of the ticket, an NPC grabbed the ticket which extended its collision, so while they were standing within the collision, the game propelled them outwards. If you're able to control this, you can skip having to grab the ticket, bypass scientists, putting the ticket into the turnstile including the animation for it, and skip the staircase resulting in an approximate 30 second time save. I love- wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Bart, you can see it. Oh my god! Potential secrets break! Dude! Holy shit! This saves so much time! Hey! <laughs> no fucking way! That saves so much fucking time! Oh my god! What a break! That is amazing! What a completely accidental discovery! During Vortal's playthrough of Jazz Jackrabbit, he discovered that during the final level, the bird companion that you get in the previous level is able to clip through the floor. The bullets shoot out very far in front of the bird that when you do the clip, the bird will shoot the ship's generator, allowing you to skip traversing through the level to get to the generator, saving around 1 minute from the any percent speedrun. After you destroy the generator, you'll be able to defeat the final boss to beat the game. So I was hoping I can like, the wall piece pass through a wall here or something. But I doubt you can. Oh, hang on, what? That's possible. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? The next skip is an out of bounds skip in Spyro Year of the Dragon discovered by Tuval. While trying to find an out of bounds in the level Charmed Ridge, Tuval wasn't making much progress. After what seems to be a minute to readjust, he jumps out randomly in a cave that doesn't have any collision on the wall and he is able to find the out of bounds. This skip is still using runs today and I think the best part about it is that he found it accidentally rather than when he was actually trying to find the out of bounds. Go figure. He just stood still for a while. Can we all just get in a group and spam our uh, shotgun yes. in a direction? Because I feel like that would cheer everyone up. Let's just look so, at the ceiling. So... What did you just do? How did you do that? What happened? Yeah. You just found a break, dude. What did you just do? How did uh, you do that? Um, for you guys who don't know, you're supposed to be forced <laughs> to sit through that cutscene, and T-Rex just did something that skipped it. I, 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 I was, I'm happy that I was right.
So in this clip of Professor Broman's four-player co-op speedrun of Borderlands 2, the group discovered a sequence break. Near the end of the mission, Rising Action, the character Lilith will use her powers to teleport the sanctuary. When this happens, there's a long cutscene that occurs, but if you travel to the Three Horns Divide at the same time the cutscene starts, you effectively skip the entire cutscene, saving roughly 1 minute and 30 seconds from the speedrun. This was said to be one of the first sequence breaks ever discovered for this speedrun. I don't know why you would be... right here. Out of all the places to crash. But I suppose it's possible. Uh oh. I don't know how I feel about. What is happening right now? I hope this is the cutscene that's supposed to be playing. During PJ Dicer's playthrough of Dragon View, he discovered a wrong warp that sent him to the endgame credits. This is a pretty technical glitch, so I'll try explaining it the best I can. Early on in the game, you get to a boss fight with a giant scorpion named Piercia. During this fight, it dirties an area in memory. This memory can only be cleaned by loading the game from a save. So if you never save the game and load it, then this memory will stay dirtied and will mess with a loop that controls the animation and a cutscene that occurs when you leave the area of the game called the Ordic Temple. When you start this cutscene and click through the first text box, the dirty memory will cause a series of loops to go haywire and they will run through a lot of different areas in memory. In order to get the occasional glitch that warps you to the credits, these loops need to end or else the game will most likely crash. But the problem with this is that almost any difference in memory values can change the outcome. For example, a timer for the animation cycles of torches in the background can influence whether or not the loop ends or not. If everything goes to plan after you click through the text box, the game will load the credits. This skip skips about half the game, but the requirements for executing the glitch are so strict that even people using tool-assisted techniques have trouble executing the glitch. It almost comes down to complete luck. <laughs> oh, what a video game. During Vuligen's playthrough of Ori in the Blind Forest, he discovered this weird occurrence you just saw on screen. This is a result of a bramble, which is one of the pink things you saw on screen earlier, and a log colliding into each other. This happened because when you enter the room, the brambles have a default spawn location and will always spawn in the same exact space. However, the logs will be in the location that they were last in when re-entering the room. So if you move the log into the same area as a bramble and re-enter the room, they will collide and the game will try and split them from each other. Now this isn't exactly a skip itself, but it did lead to the discovery of one of the biggest skips in all of Ori and the Blind Forest speedrunning. Now because of this collision glitch, this allows logs to rotate in angles that aren't normally possible. Now once this glitch is set up, you can do another trick involving spirit wells. Spirit wells are save locations in the game that can also be used to teleport to other spirit wells. Normally when performing a teleport, the game will put you in a 10 second long animation where you can't move. By doing another trick called menu storage, you can have the teleport screen up while still being able to control Ori. While you have the teleport screen up, if you die and start a teleport at the same time, the animation won't happen and you'll have free control of Ori. You now have 10 seconds to get onto the glitch log before the teleport takes place. If you teleport while on the log at a certain angle, it will rotate the location of the teleport based on the angle of the log. Doing this right will change your teleport to the final escape sequence, allowing you to beat the game in 12 minutes. The warp displacement glitch was discovered by Chunkatov and DS273. Can I still get it back? This could be really stupid. Whoa, what? Holy shit. Did I find a new glitch? During Sexual Tyrannosaurus' speedrun of Fallout 3, he found an amazing glitch that skips a lot of walking out of the game. This glitch is called Speed Cripple. You can do this glitch by loading the game at the same time your legs get crippled. If you do this at the right time, it will take your speed at 100% and add the cripple speed to it, which will boost your speed by 65%, making you move a lot faster than you normally would. This glitch saves roughly 5 minutes from the any percent speedrun. <laughs> I agree, Mr. Girth. 
I agree. What just happened? What? What's happening? It skipped a dropship. What's happening? That's never ever happened to me before in my life. It skipped a dropship. What the fuck happened? I just saved like 20 seconds. I'm on IL record pace by over 20 seconds right now by skipping a dropship. What happened? During Subwhistle speedrun of Halo Combat Evolved, he discovered a pretty cool skip known as Drop Skip. During the second mission, you have to defeat five dropships, but with this skip, you're able to skip one of them. In this mission, you're supposed to protect the Marines because they're your allies, but in the speedrun, the runner will shoot them and kill them because of the first, second, and third dropships won't come out until after the dialogue is over. You have to kill five out of the six Marines, which has to include the Marine named Johnson. Next, you have to start defeating the dropships quickly enough that you're able to skip the fourth one. By using good grenade placements, you can beat the third dropship before the second dropship despawns. Since the second dropship is in the same spot as the fourth dropship and it hasn't despawned yet, the game won't spawn the fourth dropship and you'll completely skip it, only having to defeat four ships. This skip saves roughly 25 to 30 seconds and is still used in speedruns today. Alright guys, so before I show you the number one spot, I want to share with you a few honorable mentions. The first one comes from Skirp during his speedrun of Golden Eyes. At the time, there was a tool assisted only warp that existed called the Depot Warp. This warp is supposed to be a pixel perfect trick, which is why it had never been used before, but Skirp decided to try it out during his run whenever he failed a different trick known as a train shot, he would run over to the depot building and try it out. Eventually he ended up performing the glitch. This glitch is done by switching weapons at the same time you walk into the door at a certain angle, which allows Bond to go to zero weight, allowing him to pass through tiny cracks. This skip allows you to skip going through the building and climbing the stairs, and brought the world record of 25 seconds for the depot to 23. Since this skip was already known, I decided to put it as an honorable mention, but I guess you could say it was a discovery in the fact that he discovered this trick that could be utilized by real people during a speedrun after thinking it couldn't for over 5 years. The next honorable mention comes to us from the Blaster Master Any% Percent Warpless race during Awesome Games Done Quick 2017 by Scavenger216. During this race, Shining Dragoon had the clear lead, but shortly after defeating the Area 2 boss Crabulous, Scavenger goes in to take him on. Strangely enough, after entering the room, the boss didn't spawn and he was able to pick up the gun that you get after the fight and go straight to the next area, making the race neck and neck. I put this as an honorable mention because this glitch is still new as to when this video is made, so we're still not quite sure what caused the boss skip, but I'm sure people are working on it as we speak and it will be implemented in speedruns soon enough. Yeah. There is an audio cue that he was listening for. It's very subtle, but he unpaused it, so, whoa. The boss was there. The uh, boss wasn't even there, and Scav just gets the item. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's <laughs> never happened before. <laughs> and suddenly we have a match here. Wow. If that happens for more... Uh... And this lady's a bitch. Wow. Yeah, I did just do that. Nice crit. Wait, what? Why is my text going that fast? What did I just do? I am so confused. Why is that text going by so fast? I'm... So the last accidental skip on this list was during Swap speed run of Pokemon Red, he discovered a pretty interesting trick which is now known as Bike Shop Instant Text Bug. This is done by talking to the bike shop owner in Cerulean City without a bike voucher and pressing B through the dialogue. When this is done, the game will start to display text instantly. This persists until the player opens a start menu or loads a yes or no selection box. After the discovery of this trick, the Pokemon speedrun community wasn't sure whether or not it was a glitch because there are a few borderline glitches they did allow in the glitchless category that were of the same likeness. 
but after the discovery, it was decided that it would be allowed. Since Pokemon Red is a pretty optimized speedrun, the discovery of this glitch was big enough to change some of the records, and Gunner Maniac 3 ended up taking the world record with a time of 1 hour and 48 minutes. After Gunner got the world record, this led to a discussion of a ban in February of 2016. The community came forward to declare that they didn't want the use of this bug in the glitches category, and all runs including the glitch were moved to the any percent no major glitches section, which is rarely ran. This decision was made by a community vote, in which a majority voted against the allowing the bug because of the heavy reset rate added onto an already reset heavy game since speedrunners wouldn't be able to use items or switch Pokemon during battles. Of course speedrunners could have always just not used a bug if they didn't want to, but it would have been nearly impossible to get world record without using it, so everyone would have been forced to use it. This skip discovery was one of the most controversial skips in all of speedrunning. 